This is Twit. Steve, the reason why we have you here is because something interesting has happened on the front of world privacy. Now, I, I don't want to be like a lot of reactionary podcasts and newscasts out there who have been saying that this is the worst thing ever. This is this is horrible. It is bad. But as you and I know, this has sort of been a general progression leading up to where we are now. Yes. So, yes, what you're referring to is that last Thursday, so a week ago, there was a, the the U.S. omnibus spending bill authorizing the the 1.3 trillion dollars in spending that's going to keep the U.S. funded through next September was was passed by both houses of Congress and our President Trump blessed it and said yes you know with th this is all now the law of the land it was 2,200 pages and what disturbs us is that as often happens, but not for things that we really care that much about, there was a little piece of legislation that was initially introduced in February that was snuck into this known as the Cloud, C-L-O-U-D, Act, and it became law just sort of because all of the other 2,100 and some odd pages had to happen and so, you know, we always sort of hear about this is the way laws are passed and no one has a chance to. I mean, look at that stack that's on the screen yeah. right now. Nobody read that. So, you know, multiple committees all push stuff together. Somewhere in there is some legislation which is said to have been the result of Microsoft's fighting the government's request for information about a Microsoft customer whose email was stored offshore in Ireland five years ago, the government didn't like the fact that Microsoft was able to make a pretty good case for why they shouldn't have access to it. Yeah. So this removes that barrier. I, I was going to mention that because it wasn't just Microsoft fighting the U.S. government. It was Microsoft winning. Microsoft was actually making great legal arguments saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have no jurisdiction over a data center in Ireland, especially since uh, you may remember this from what, two, two and a half years ago when this first started being a thing. Microsoft actually went through the, the, the process of removing all access for themselves. They said, we don't actually control the data. The data is controlled right. by an entity in Ireland. We go to them to request it. So it's not as if we have any direct access to the data that you want. Well, this this was the U.S. government saying, oh, really? OK, well, we'll, we'll get around that. So, yeah, so the the people who are focused and concerned about privacy, like the EFF, their heads are exploding. When, when this legislation first appeared in February, they were dead set against it. Now, of course, they're really unhappy. And, you know, in the U.S., the Constitution provides in the Fourth Amendment protection against unwarranted search and seizure. And those who are worried about what this means – their position is that this is a backdoor around essentially a, an end run, end run around our Fourth Amendment protection, which as a consequence of this so-called clarification, that's what the C of cloud stands for, the clarification, because, you know, we weren't sure before. Now we're just going to make it law. Right. Now we're very now now it's very clear. It's got such a wonderful name too. The clarifying lawful <laughs> overseas use of data. That's the cloud. I mean, the cloud Some, is sometimes your acronyms really do work for you, and in this case, yes, the Cloud Act. Now, of course, you're talking about the removal of, of Fourth Amendment protections. Uh, in a nutshell, what this does is it means any piece of data, anything that any company in the United States has that's stored in the cloud, stored on servers, in other words, uh, connected to the internet, can now be accessed without a warrant. And that's the big problem. Without a warrant is the part that is just driving people crazy, especially EFF. Yes. Law the enforcement can simply say to some cloud provider, mm -hmm. we want the data that you are storing for such and such an individual without needing to get a judge to agree that there is reasonable cause for that request. Right. That is, it, all privacy is gone, essentially. Yeah, and, and it's not just U.S. law enforcement. This is the other part of it that just had people kind of scratching their heads. Uh, what, what they've done is they've given the executive branch 
the power to create agreements with other Treaties. law agencies across the world without any yep. approval. So there's there's no list that needs to be approved. With the stroke of a pen, the president can say, so-and-so law enforcement in such-and-such such a country, you can now make all the same requests. And they have to be uh, uh, they have to be filled, and there can be no notification of the party whose data is being looked at. That's the part where, where some of us are going, oh, yeah, okay, as, as you said, privacy is now dead. Yeah. So, you know, we could consider this maybe the inevitable evolution of the fact that governments really want to have ex extreme visibility into everything they can get. And so as a consequence of the fact now uh, and understand this, this wasn't debated. This wasn't discussed. This wasn't legislated. The, 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 the controversial aspect of this is that it was slipped into a must pass massive omnibus spending bill, even though this has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Which, so, which actually does happen far more than you yes. might expect. This yes. is how pork makes it in. Uh, it says normally we don't care. This time we care. Precisely, precisely. And and we sounded the alarm about this. We talked about it on Twilight. I know you talked about it on Security Now. Uh, and it was it was one of these things. I think people were they just realized people were so fatigued with everything else that was happening. It was it was one of these. This is not worth fighting. Just right. Just let so, this one go. So you reached out because you and I want to talk about specific things that people who are concerned about the security and privacy of their remotely stored data, what actions and measures we can take to provide our own privacy protection for what is otherwise no longer protected. Precisely. We have grown up with an expectation of privacy. In other words, that our are uh, service providers, Google, Facebook, whatever it might be, will make a relatively strong effort to keep what we have secure. It's our data, it's ours. They may use it for, for uh, metadata, for ad purposes, but that no one would have access to it. That's kind of gone to the side now. We have to assume that at any point, anyone can take a look at our data and we won't know that they've taken well, a look at and, our data. And Apple has made a lot of noise mm -hmm. and arguably money from being the champion of their customers' privacy. Uh, I, I know that, um, uh, what's the Apple CEO? I'm just blanking on his oh, name. Tim, Tim. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was just recently attacking Zuckerberg and Facebook for for Facebook's controversial policies. And, I, and I, I kind of watched that and I thought, well, yeah, you know, but your business model is to sell hardware Theirs is to sell their customers. Yeah. He, so, he had a great dig yesterday. He was just saying, look, this is what's inevitable when your customers aren't your customers. They're your product. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and and so, I think the, the, the Cambridge Analytica story actually brought that out for a lot of people who hadn't been paying attention to this, which is, yes. well, yeah, that's of course Facebook did that because that's how they make their money. Uh, and, right. and to a lot of people, you and I included, this is just sort of the natural evolution of what we saw the minute services started ending up on the cloud. Of course, yes. law enforcement is going to want to take a peek. Of course, they're going to they're going to love the immediate access to any data that they want. And of course, they'd like to be able to do it without a warrant because warrants are slow and they take time. Well, and somewhat controversially, of course, Google and Gmail are known to be looking into what you're doing because that's how they 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 arrange advertising and profiling. And so, you know, so, you know, some people are a little worried or upset that that Google is looking at the content of their email. But that's the that's the bargain you make for having a an otherwise robust and useful and well-known free email system with a lot of storage. Precisely. Now, I know people are going to immediately think of emails. Uh, they're immediately going to think of things like Dropbox and they're going to say, OK, well, well, all that all that data is now accessible by any law enforcement agency that has the authorization of the president. But I want to before we get to that, Steve, I do want to take a look at something that a lot of people overlook. And you did you did bring it up. It's it's what providers like Google actually make their money off of. It's the metadata. It's it's some of the data that you may not consider is now accessible by law enforcement across the world. Uh, I, I want to use Google as an, as an example because it's 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 the most beautiful uh, <laughs> example that there is. But just be aware that every provider 
of cloud services can do the same thing. And services like Yahoo or, or Facebook make their money by doing it. If you could go to my screen, Alex, this is uh, the history.google.com. So if you go to history.google.com, you will get to your activity. Uh, now, I turned this all back on so that we could do this episode. I normally have these things turned off by default. But as you can see, it's giving me this wonderful view of literally everything that I have done in the Google ecosystem. This includes apps that I've run on my phone or my Chromebook, all the sites I visited. It will look at my YouTube uh, history. It's, it's pretty comprehensive. I mean, this is the history of, of my time on the web. And in fact, if you go down into uh, uh, the activities themselves, one of my, my favorite is the timeline. So this is all the times that I've forgotten to turn off my phone or turn off location. Uh, and it, it pegged me. Uh, and, and this goes back several years. Now, I was good enough where I, every time I've gone into Africa, my phone's been offline. And most of the time that I've gone into Europe, my phone's been offline. But I don't always remember. And Steve, that's the kind of insidious thing about this. Yeah. Um, I mean, it seems innocent. But from this, you can get a pretty good idea of what I'm doing. Because you know right. all my and locations. So, and so, Matt, so our listeners should picture their own data that is this same information for themselves being of being available for, on request by any agency now in the world oh wow it got my trip in malta i didn't hmm. how did it do that i thought that was off okay well, so <laughs> and, and, and of course you know and and we also know you know any ios user i i, I i'm ios um you're constantly being pushed to turn on location services when you update to ios bluetooth gets flipped back on oh because you must have meant to have it on i mean so like you know there's an active push even with you know in, in this case apple but but just sort of generally and of course we just covered the story about how facebook messenger was surreptitiously doing text and call logging without obtaining their users permission first right. so so you know it really is us versus the massive data collectors and aggregators and you know net yeah yeah and i mean this this is where they make their money uh, because they can sell this to advertisers and as again as we learned from the cambridge analytica story when advertisers have this kind of information, they can develop a profile of you and they know exactly how to pitch to you, when to pitch to you. Uh, and, yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, and of course, of course, you know, Google is one and owns DoubleClick. And mm -hmm. so, you know, they don't, all they have to do is hand it across the aisle. Precisely. Uh, I, I, I'm bringing this up because this is probably the easiest way for you to start taking back some of your privacy. If you go back to my screen, if you go into your activity control, you can actually turn all of this off. Uh, now, it will tell you every time you do this, it's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? And that's because you're, you're essentially telling Google or whoever, uh, I don't want you to be able to sell this information about me anymore. Now, Google is actually very clear, though. They say, if you turn this off, we will stop tracking it in this view. We will no longer have uh, all of this information in this history. However, they do still collect it. They just don't store it for a while. There is no way to actually completely turn this off. There is... If, uh, if law enforcement asks for it, there is still data that they can get for, from you and about you, even if you have all of these settings turned off. Uh, that's, that's another one of those, oh, uh, yeah, just, just so you know. Okay, now I'm fully paused, so Google is technically no longer collecting information about me, although they still can.